Hey hoodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Homeless Tom. <laughs> and thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you are new to my channel, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My channel is really about loving my makeup collection as it currently is and being very discerning when I do decide to bring in new makeup to my collection. So if that kind of content sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. And if you would like to support me on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash homeless Tom. No pressure though. I'm just so thankful that you are here, but just know that patrons get two additional videos every month. And no matter what patron level you are at, it's the same two videos for everyone. It's just kind of like, if you would like to support me that way, you can, if not, no worries. Today's video is actually in partnership with the brand Blink. So throughout the course of this video, I'm going to be using three products that Blink was kind enough to send me and I will be reviewing them honestly. That is what they asked me to do. So we will be doing that. Blink was kind enough to provide me with an affiliate link. It's at the very top of my description box down below. Feel free to head to Blink's website to check out what they have to offer because they had a lot more to offer than I really thought. I really only knew them from their mascaras, but they have some other things happening. I'm going to talk about a few of those things in this video. And if you should decide to make a purchase, you will receive 20% off when you use my link. This does not mean that you need to run to Blink and buy stuff. You know, that's not what I'm about. That's not what I'm doing. So if you weren't interested in Blink, if you weren't wanting to try any of those things that they have to offer, don't feel pressured to buy anything. That's not what we do here. It's just there for you if you should choose to purchase something. But I do encourage you to click through just to see what they have because they do have like a lot more than I thought they did. So that was very interesting for me. If you are interested in any of the specific Blink products, I will have timestamps down below for you to find where I'm reviewing them. I'm just gonna talk about them organically while I'm doing my makeup today. And so that's where those reviews will be. Otherwise, I will be answering some of the questions that you asked me before the end of last year, which was supposed to be a different video while using some products that I really haven't shown on camera. I have some things that I have made decisions about. So I'm excited to get into it with you. We have a lot to catch up on. I feel like the end of last year was so much reviewing and so much like this, this, and this. And now we're getting kind of back into the normal content. And I'm like, thrilled. We're actually starting with a Blink product, so let's talk about it. This is the Blink Eyeshadow Primer. It comes in this actually very cute cutesy packaging. I don't know. I've never seen an eyeshadow primer come in such like a cute package. It's not like metal or anything. It's not like made of glass. So it's not like a very heavy product, but that's okay. I mean, I don't really need my eyeshadow primer to like be an experience, but I have had other eyeshadow primers that have felt like an experience. But what I really like about this is that this is clear and I feel like every other eyeshadow primer I have, for example, the Too Faced eyeshadow primer, I can't see how much I have in there. So to me, that's a very big pro because I like to know when I'm running low on something, especially when it comes in the kind of component where you, you're not like squeezing out the product. You are like just putting that doe foot in there and hoping for the best. The consistency of this is really nice and it has a large flat paddle. And so I have kind of found that less is more when it comes to this eyeshadow primer. Not that it like is bad if you go a little bit overboard, just use what you need. I normally just swipe one side of the doe foot on one eye and then I flip the doe foot around and just use whatever's left on the other side. And it is definitely tackier than some eyeshadow bases that I have used in the past, but not so sticky that it doesn't feel like you could blend your eyeshadow on top of it. Now, I will say this, in the way I like to use eyeshadow, I always set my eyeshadow base and I, it's just, I don't do my eyeshadow the other way, but I imagine if you're someone who likes to use color and like really pack it in, that it would really do something for you. It would really allow that grip. I'm going to set it. I'm going to be using the Hindash palette today, but I have really enjoyed this. I've actually really, really enjoyed this and I wasn't expecting it because it's such like a kind of inconsequential product. I was on the hunt for a new eyeshadow primer this year and I did buy the Too Faced one and the Too Faced one is fine but the Blink one I think I like it just a little bit better if I'm being very honest with you. I'm using the wet side of this Hindash palette to set and then I'll be using the Hindash palette to also build my eyeshadow look today. Something that I do when I'm testing eyeshadow bases which I don't recommend you doing this is to do a workout with the eyeshadow on to see if it holds up. So I'm gonna insert some footage from before and after a Peloton workout where I use this for my my eyeshadow base. I'm just going to show you how the eyeshadow primer did by holding up my makeup. So I have on the Blink eyeshadow primer and I'm going to work out. I don't know I'm going to do the hardest workout, but here we are. It, my eyeshadow looks good. We're about to hop on. We'll see what happens. We'll report back at the end. We'll see if any creasing occurs. So when I have used the Air Atelier and the Too Faced primer in this situation, with this kind of eyeshadow, it typically has held up. So I hate doing this. I don't recommend that you work out with your makeup on, okay? Okay. 
Uh, no creasing. But it sure is sweaty. Okay. It passes that test. <laughs> So as you can see, the primer held up very well. It held on to my eyeshadow very, very well. Kind of the same with all of my eyeshadow bases. I find that this is best for mattes and satins. Anything with a lot of texture and like really foiled looking, it like does an okay job holding them, but I'm always gonna use like the NYX glitter primer to really hold those into place if I'm going to be using some kind of intense shadows. So yeah, the Blink eyeshadow primer is very nice. That being said, while we are here, I'm going to actually keep the blank eyeshadow primer and I'm going to declutter the Too Faced one to a friend so that they can use it and try it out. I'm also realizing that I forgot to put lip balm on at the beginning of this video, so I'm going to be doing that. Let's start answering questions while I start working on my eyeshadow. I assume that this video is going to be pretty long. I'm gonna leave everyone who asks questions anonymous. If you were randomly picked to go to the moon, which eyeshadow single would you wear? Well, I think first and foremost, if I was offered to go to the moon, I would decline the offer. We're just gonna do a really soft smoky eye. I'm gonna go into tan and deepen it out with feel. and probably leave it there. I might go into Fatum at the bottom to deepen out the outer corner a little bit, but we'll see when we are getting there. Yeah, I'm not big on space. I, I have no curiosities about it. This is how I perceive both space and like the depths of the ocean is like, if I couldn't get to it naturally, like if organically with the body that I have, if it's not something that I could get to, I'm probably not supposed to be there. Like I'll get on airplanes, but they kind of fall into the same place. But like, we're not going outside the atmosphere, right? And I just don't need to do that. So I, but in the case that I would, I probably would wear, I feel like I would need to wear something really galactic, but I probably honestly would wear a glitter. That feels like it makes the most sense to me is that I would wear a glitter. And so I would wear, let me just pull it out. This Chidori glitter gel from... Slay Fire Cosmetics, just cause it's very pretty and sparkly and it have to be sparkly. And I just think that's what it was. If not that glitter, the Lemonhead LA glitter in Houdini, the space paste in Houdini. Yeah, something like that. I feel like it would be my journey as far as what I would wear to the space. But again, wouldn't go, if I was offered to, it wouldn't be a thing that I would do. My favorite genre of movies, TV, and books. So I think it's kind of important to know that I like mostly at this point, listen to podcasts or I watch YouTube. I don't have TV in my house. Like I don't pay for like cable or satellite or anything. I literally just pay for the internet and I watch through that. So the last movie I saw was The Menu, which is like a horror comedy, a black, dark horror comedy. I don't want to give too much away. It's a very good movie. And it's not, it's not like jump scare scary. Obviously some people do die in the film, but it's not like super, like it's more like the concept is what's scary rather than it being like true horror. And I, I found that it landed on the side of more like comedy, like not dark, landed on dark comedy, like the comedy in the darkness, more so than it landed in like a true, like horror film, but it, I would still consider it to be horror. So I really liked that. I also just watched The Glass Onion on Netflix and I liked that. Knives Out was like actually <laughs> the last movie I saw in theaters before the pandemic. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I didn't go see a lot of movies before the pandemic. I would rather watch, you know, a lot of television or like 70 hours of YouTube videos than to commit to watching a movie. I just think that they are making movies too long now. Like I know the new Avatar movie is like, three hours long, like I'm not doing that. I like also my content to be the kind of thing that I can put on in the background and let it play and then like look up occasionally or with podcasts, just like listen to it while I do other things. I think when the storytelling is so important that I need to be paying full attention to it is where you kind of lose me a little bit. And I don't mean that really like in a super, like that sounds like really bad and like that I just have no focus. It's not that, it's just like, I'm busy. Like I, I things, got, things gotta serve like multiple purposes and if content can't do that for me, I just really don't want it. But will I watch like a few hours of, 
I didn't really need to do this. Why am I doing this? There's another product we're gonna use that's gonna just cover this up. So I just wanted a little bit smokier, so maybe it's fine. I'm trying to think of like a new TV show that I've watched. I just, <laughs> today, today I started watching the TV show Hacks, which I like, but I, again, I just like don't watch a lot of TV anymore. And I would sooner watch like comforting television, like things I've watched a thousand times, because if I've seen it a thousand times, I'm, I don't feel like I need to really watch it. So like I watch Gilmore Girls a lot. I put Bob's Burgers on in the background a lot you know just like stuff that's kind of like I've seen it so many times where it's just like it doesn't really matter anyway on my lids I don't think I've shown this on camera like being used this is the Chantecaille Sunbeam cheek and eye shade in Ray and I'm just gonna take my finger and put that on the lids music I listen to kind of just like pure pure pop music. It's kind of just what I'm into. But you know, I throw curveballs in every now and then. Sometimes you'll find me listening to, well, I guess what's been told to me is, is dad rock. But yeah, I really like female vocalists is really kind of what I really kind of prefer to listen to or like female vocalists that like are in the pop genre. We are now on to the second product that Blink sent me. This is the gel eyeliner in the shade black. It's just a potted gel liner. Here's the deal. So I feel like whenever I started makeup, the concept of like a potted gel liner like this was so scary to me. Like I was really scared of the idea of it. I was like, there's no way that this is the kind of product that I feel like I could get on with. This is literally the literally the first time I've used a potted gel liner. If you are a patron of mine, you've already seen it, but I put this, I used this for the first time and I did a wing and it was the easiest wing I've ever done. I always was kind of like led to believe that pens were the way to go when it came to doing a wing. And that's like very much, I think, of the era that I came into. So like the KVD Beauty Tattoo Liner was really what was like the eyeliner du jour whenever I was like getting into makeup and a lot of people really used that. And I just feel like everyone was always just using pen eyeliners and I thought that's the way it had to be. But using a gel potted liner is very, very nice. And I really, really like this one. You kind of have to take that with a grain of salt because I have not tried many others to compare this to. But what I'm gonna do is do a little swatch. It it is a nice dark black, you know, it's, I feel like it's a true black. It's not, I feel like it's not gray, which I think is a concern for some people whenever they are trying an eyeliner. I have a Surratt Beauty eyeliner in Noir. I'm going to swatch it down below it. They, it, maybe the Surratt is just a little deeper. It's still black, it's not gray. So it's not the blackest of blacks, which could either be a pro or a con to you. Here's my findings. I love putting on a wing with it and I love it on the lash line. I do not suggest though, if you were to try this particular potted liner to put it in your waterline or tight line with it. I did that once and I have some footage of how it looked whenever I had worn it for a bit of time. So I just filmed a video with the Blink eyeliner in my waterline and it definitely like I went on a journey. It had all kind of fallen right on the, like it kind of went up this way and kind of just fell onto the top of my cheek. I find that it wears really well and has longevity and just stays the same color if you put it on your actual lid, if you're using it on top of your lashes. It works really well, just not in the waterline. Yeah, I've been enjoying playing around with this. I have been enjoying doing wings with it. I'm really not someone who's like a, a wing person. Like I really just don't love doing wing liner, but I have been doing it so much since I got this. And it's just because I like the formula. I like it glides on, there's no tugging. It's just very agreeable to do. But again, that could be most gel potted eyeliners. I just don't have a lot of experience. So let me throw on this wing real quick and I will come back and tell you more. That wasn't my best liner application. That's not the fault of the product. Like I said, I haven't really been do, I've only been really doing wings again recently. So I'm still getting into the practice of doing them, but I just really like the way that it glides onto my eyes and makes it very, very easy. So there we go. We have some wings on. In the tight line and the water line, I'm going to use black coffee from Pat McGrath. Someone asked, how do I present at work? Do you feel accepted, celebrated in your visible queerness? I think that context is pretty important here whenever I discuss this. So I work from home and I have never met any one of my coworkers in person. My coworkers know that I do this. Like they know that I have a channel. My one coworker, well, my boss actually, she didn't text me, but she did say in one of our meetings, she was like, just so you guys know, like if you are on TikTok, like this was before I knew this, but 
but she was just like, just so you know, like if you have your contact setting on, like I can, like sometimes your TikToks will pop up onto my feed. And I wasn't really horrified by that. Like my TikTok feed is mostly like kind of beauty content related. Whatever she'd be seeing from me would be like that. So like, I'm not really one to be on the internet making like any kind of comments that I think my work would be adverse to. So I, <laughs> anyway. So I wasn't really concerned about that to make it clear, to get to the point of that. Don't really do my makeup for work. And I think the important context to that is not that I, we only have meetings like a couple times a month. So like, I'm not really on camera a lot. It's not a thing because it really has no opportunity to be a thing. I do kind of feel just like with the work that I do, which I don't want to get too much into like what I do for work on here. It's more about being good at the job rather than <laughs> anything else. And I'm pretty, I would say that I'm, I'm pretty good at the job. So that's kind of how I feel about it. And like, if I think about previous jobs, I really didn't come out as non-binary until I was even like after I was done working at Sephora. But I will say this, like for the qualms that I had with working at Sephora, my identity was never like a concern working there. That was never one of my complaints. I honestly don't know what I would do if I wasn't working from home and this wasn't the scenario. Cause I have a feeling that it would be tough for me to find like a job that wasn't like in a retail setting that was in a business setting where I was like, you know, making the kind of money I would like to make. I don't know. I'm very pleased with my job. So I really like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. I like who I work with. I think if I didn't work from home, it'd be a little bit of a different conversation, but cause that is the nature of how I work. I don't really find any issues. Question also started with how do you present at work? Yeah, it's it's mostly I'm in sweatshirts. <laughs> so it's like, it's not like they're again, only really seeing me from my chest up. And normally I'm just wearing a sweatshirt. I'm sitting at a computer all day. Well, I'm not sitting anymore. I have a standing desk now. So I am doing that. That's different. I have worn makeup on meetings before. It was, it's always when I'm doing like foundation wear tests. That's really the only time I'm wearing makeup while I work. I would probably do it more if I started later in the day. Like I'd probably wear makeup more if I started later in the day, but I do start at 6 a.m. And so I'm just not like, I just can't do that every Every day and it would be like maybe I would wear more makeup if I was going somewhere that early but I'm not and so I don't. Someone asked do I go on reddit and read the tea on other influencers? No absolutely not. I had a podcast before I started doing YouTube stuff and the podcast was successful in the niche that it was in and I will tell you that I used to when we did that read to see what people were saying about us and that is just a way to get your feelings hurt. I find that reddit as a forum in general is really wants to be negative unless you're coming directly to me with something I'm not gonna go find it I'm not in the nature of like finding a reason to, to stop liking other people unless like they've done something incredibly wrong I don't read about anyone on reddit I don't go on reddit I don't need to know. I know that a lot of people like talk about bad things that brands do over there too. And I think that I would like to be more informed on that, but I'm not gonna do like the, the minesweeper game of trying to avoid where I might get mentioned. I do have a very close friend of mine who does actually go on Reddit and like find out if people are saying things about me. We don't talk about it too often. And basically what she kind of does is like, let me know. It's just like, if anything I need to be worried about, she'll let me know. But uh, other than that, nothing has happened and I don't really care to know. I also have friends in this space who do what I do. Things have been said about them and it's just like if you're not gonna say it to the person's face, like if you're not gonna go to the, their comment section and say it to them, you must not be really concerned with what they're what they're about or what they're doing. And it's like also I think it's so important to keep in mind if you don't like a content creator, you don't have to watch their content. That really is the be all end all of it. Content creators are gonna make their content and if you don't like them, there is no need for you to watch them. And if you're watching them to get mad, if you're doing like a hate watch thing, that's your fault. And then you're going to go run off to Reddit and complain about what they're doing because you don't like it. There are so many creators on this platform, larger than me, smaller than me, that do very different things than I do that other people you watch do. So if you don't like what one person does, just go, that person's not for me. And then go find another content creator who really is doing the things that you want to see. And that's like really what it boils down to. And I don't know how hard that is. It happened with our podcast too, is like people would be like, I just don't like, I don't like them. I don't like both of them or Tom's annoying, whatever. Like you would get these reviews and it's just like, and I understand that reviews are to like help other people out. But like, I've listened to so, I've started listening to so many podcasts and I have tried watching so many content creators where they come on screen, I watch them for a bit and it's just not for me. And so I go, oh, okay, that's not for me. But like, I also, sometimes I'll watch someone and it might not be for me, but I might know who it is for. And I can tell that person now that I've watched that 
Do you know what I mean? Like, there's just so much out there for the internet or Reddit to be focused on a few people to talk about them regularly. I just think it's like a waste of time for everyone. Stop complaining about people you don't like and just find new people. Now, if people are really doing really, really heinous, terrible things, I need we need to hold people accountable. But like doing it on Reddit away from that person, is that how you hold people accountable? By like talking behind their back? Is that holding people accountable? No, I we really need to move away from this call out culture and like move into call in culture. And I'm more than happy to hear people out if they think that I have said or done something or like I'm happy to hear that out but like I'm not gonna go to reddit to find that information. I wouldn't go to reddit to see criticisms of me and I don't think other content creators should have to go to reddit to like see real criticisms of them because I think a lot of what happens on reddit isn't real criticism. It's just complaining about not liking someone and not vibing with someone when very easily you can go find other content that's going to be more for you. But that's just my opinion. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I try to see clear. Steer clear of the Reddit group anymore. How do you keep your collection feeling fresh and new, especially when you're on a low buy? Also, there was also a second part where it was like, can we see more fashion content from you? I am trying to come up with a way to talk about fashion more. I haven't figured out what that is yet. So that's like on the docket. I want to do more of that this year because you guys seem to really like it. It is something that causes me a little bit of anxiety and I need to find a way to like, it's copacetic where like I, I find it fun to make and then you also find it fun to watch. I'm working on that. But like, I don't bring a lot of clothing in to my collection and I wear like a lot of black. I don't know. I don't, I have been told that people think I'm very fashionable when I just kind of like buy what I like and I wear what I like. And that's how it feels to me. So I don't know. In regards to keeping your collection feeling fresh. Oh my God, I put this bronzer on before we talk about that. I have decided to keep the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and I'm going to pass on the milk bronzer. This one's a little bit dark. And if we're gonna, if I'm gonna wear a darker bronzer, darker cream bronzer, I'm going to use my Chanel instead of this. But this was really lovely. I did enjoy using it and I think someone else will really like it too. But yeah, I'm holding on to this. The weird color of it, the weird light color of it, it's really good for the winter time. So I have been jiving with it. I like the formula, so I'm willing to keep holding on to that. But we will be saying goodbye to this. Whenever I was on my low buy or on my no buy, and a lot of what I do now is kind of similar. It's just like a matter of looking at your collection differently. How can you look at your collection differently? Can you try different techniques? And so my Becoming series is a really good testament, a really good way to look at makeup a little bit differently because you're trying to emulate what the other person's doing and not exactly what you might do with makeup. And even though you might not have the exact things that creators talk about, but like trying to emulate their makeup is a really good way to keep it fresh, but also trying to use and push things that maybe you don't use, right? So if you're not bringing in new things, I bet you're probably reaching for the same couple things over and over again. What are you afraid? of using in your collection. Try using it. Try it out. Do some makeup playtime before you take off your makeup and try putting on things in different places. Try, just try a bunch of different things. Start using your makeup to actually play instead of doing the same face every time. Because if you're on a low buy and you are using the same eyeshadow palette and the same blush and kind of doing the same look over and over again, how, how could your collection feel fresh if you are not allowing it to speak to you differently? So I think that's like one of the major things that someone has to do whenever they're on a low buy. I don't want to speak for everyone because everyone has a different collection size, but if you have singles and you can like move your your eyeshadows around, building your own palettes, throwing some shades in there you might not always use, but will inspire you when you open up that build, your, like the palette that you built on your own. I think those are like the best ways to do it. So like trying to emulate other people. If you have some colors that are already in your collection that you're kind of afraid to use, now's the time. If you're not bringing more in, now's the time to start using what you have. If there's something that you have that you don't use a lot, Figure out if you like it. I found like doing the project where I was like trying to use all of my makeup really helpful by taking like even if you wanted to do something like that, making a project out of it beyond just the no buy or the low buy. Because I think if you just have the low buy or the no buy to focus on, it's all you're thinking of. But if you're doing a no buy, but throughout that no buy, you are doing a project with it. So I'm not even really talking about project pans, but like I really wanted to get in touch with my collection better. And so going through everything and then once I use it, I took it away and I really found out which I, like what I really liked using. And I felt that to be also helpful about purchasing later. So once I knew my collection and I knew my preferences and I knew what to look for whenever I was buying new stuff, like if you look at my end of the year rankings of all of the products I used in 2022, the products that are even at the bottom of my list, the products 
and center at the very bottom of my list. There was maybe a few that I actually hated and really didn't work for me. You get a couple in and it's just like all of it was okay. I have learned through loving my collection as it is to tr like bring in much less duds. Like I, so I think whenever you really find out and hone what in your collection is really 100% for you, you also find things that don't work for you. And that way, whenever you do allow yourself purchases, whenever you do use some of your low buy budget, when you do get to buy stuff again after your no buy, you think about it a lot differently because you're like, you know what? before I did my no buy, before I did my low buy, I would have bought that. But now that I know my makeup collection, like, and I know myself better, I know based on some of the words there, some of the ingredients in there that like, that's like not something I'm gonna vibe with. So I can just pass on it. So I find it to be a little helpful to do like a project, something like that, where you're like really getting to know your collection better. And if you are using your collection a lot and you're like, not bored of it, but you're finding that it's not working for you, you can prepare yourself for when you're ready to make a purchase to like make better purchases too. Make it not all about the low buy, try to find a way to kind of like gamify it. And you're like, not the, it's not the low buy that you're focused on. It's like other things. I don't know if that's helpful, but that's what I found to be the most helpful to me. What are some makeup lessons you learned this year? Um, any tips or hacks, or did you hone in on types of products that you prefer and or shades? So yeah, I think I learned when we talk about shades, I think that actually this is a really good example. I think Mimi and Inner Glow. I think I kind of learned that, I'm gonna put this on as a blush, by the way, while I talk about this. I really thought I was someone who really loved bold, bold blushes. Uh, oh, Desert Orchid is also a really good example of this too, but I didn't really focus on that this year. It was like a little bit of an older product, but I feel similarly about it. I really like blushes that are kind of more neutral with like a little hint of, Hmm? versus really big, bold blushes. Now I still love a bold blushy look, but I kind of like moved away from wearing so much. I still put a lot of it on. Like, and this still feels like a very good amount of blush, but like it's, there's something about it that I found really, I really, really liked it. I know that we are in 2023 and I just talked about this, but like I'm now curious to try other gel potted eyeliners too, because I really like the experience of using this one. And I was like, I know Lethal makes some really fun eyeliner colors. And so I'm like, do I want to get into that? Obviously, and like, I don't want to get too into it. Like, I don't want to get so into it that like I, I lose track and start spending money on things. But gel eyeliner is like something that I was like, oh, I didn't know that that's something that I would be interested in. And now that I'm like, now that I'm in it, I'm like kind of interested in it. I'm going to use the Tarte Twinkle Palette for highlighter, but I don't think I learned like any hacks or anything like that. I don't really do like hacky or, or trendy makeup, I don't think. The Chantecaille thing, it doesn't really need a highlight, but you're on Hope Mess Tom's channel and so <laughs> if there's gonna be something, there's gonna be a highlight. Now that it's been a year since you finished your no buy, is there anything else you've learned? Would you do anything differently if you did your no buy over again? So I kind of already mentioned this in the answer to another question, but the no buy really changed. I'm gonna use the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Powder while I talk about this. I know I talked about this in my last video, but there's pan. It feels so good. And now we get to watch myself deteriorate as I <laughs> continue using this product. And I'm like, wait a minute. Do I want to be someone who starts panning product? I think I learned a lot in my no buy. Also, I think the context of my no buy is also really important. I had so much more makeup during that time in my makeup collection, like in my drawers. I think I had like 10 or 11 foundations coming out of the no buy, coming out of the like, going into that. I think that this is like an like important context, even for the person who talked about making like a low buy, no buy, feel more fun. I had 11 foundations to try. I personally had like a lot to get my hands into, to try already in my collection to get my head wrapped around it. So I think the biggest takeaway I learned that took me over the course of the year to learn, I ended my trying all of my makeup video like series with still a bunch of foundations. About halfway through the year, I was like, I don't want this many foundations. I want four foundations that I know how they perform. I know how they perform with all the primers I have. And I just like didn't have that. So that's something that I learned is that I want less kind of overall. I now only have one concealer. I do want less makeup. I do want that. And I think if you watched my video from Monday, you'll also see that like, I'm definitely much more into keeping my collection, my collection. And then when I'm reviewing things, it's mostly for review as opposed to something that 
I'm going to hold on to. It's the review is like for your knowledge and for you to know. And then if I review something and it is a banger and I think it warrants a place in my collection, I'll absolutely keep it. But I probably will come at the fate of something from my collection leaving, if that makes sense. Like, so we just saw that happen with the blink. I'm like, I prefer this eyeshadow primer. I'm going to move on. I don't need the Too Faced and this one. They serve the same purpose. Now, I understand that I don't do that with everything. Like, I do have a couple of bronzers. Like, I have two cream bronzers. I have a powder bronzer. But I think that's the thing that I learned the most is, like, how to be more discerning about my tastes and what I want. And I think that was the, the biggest takeaway because I don't feel so compelled to buy makeup for myself because I know how to appreciate the makeup I have and I know that I really like a lot of the makeup that I have and I, it's still not perfect like I do want to get through my eyeshadows this year and like really make some cuts and make some decisions about like what I really want to keep around so that's like stuff that I'm still learning and processing but I do think the biggest takeaway from me was that. How do you maintain your happiness throughout long, dark, wintry months? And then also curious about any fashion you're curious about. I'm gonna spray my face and, and then um, while I'm fanning my face, we can talk. In regards on how to survive the short days, the cold months, the all the stuff that comes with that you need to hold on to the people that you love the most because a lot of them are struggling too i don't know that i have the perfect answer to this because this is something that i really struggle with it's something that a lot of my friends struggle with and getting through it is a lot it is just a lot so i would say i don't know i'm the kind of person who tends to hermit when I'm feeling sad and not really want to talk to people. And I find that it's very important for me to talk to people. So I think a good example was like a couple weekends ago, kind of really wasn't talking to anybody. Like I maybe texted a couple of friends a couple of times throughout that weekend, but I didn't see anyone. I really didn't leave my bedroom other than to like shower, you know, like eat and shower and whatever. It was Monday and there are a couple of people who I really kind of like only talked to throughout the week, some friends. So I started Marco Poloing with people, which is like an app, which is an app that I recommend. If you don't know what Marco Polo is, it's like Snapchat, but everything doesn't disappear. And it's not just pictures. So it's like, you'll send a, it's like kind of like a video message. So it's like, I would just talk to my camera and whether or not my friend is available, it's still gonna send it to them. And then they can watch it whenever they want and they can watch part of it and then pause and then continue it whenever they want to. And so they'll, you know, they'll send back to you whenever they are ready. And you might all both be available at the same time. And so if someone's recording real time, someone else could be watching it real time. And it's only like, it's only one on one. I mean, you can make groups too, but like, it's mostly just one on one. It's like people in your contact book. Like it's not like strangers. So I have found that to be much more preferable to me to texting to feel connection, because you can hear the way that people are talking and the what the 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 way their voice is like lifting and falling and raising. And so I find that to be more beneficial than texting and also spending time with people if you can if you feel comfortable too because I know that not everyone's really comfortable still seeing people and like the, I know numbers are spiking again so I take that into consideration when I give this advice but if you are comfortable seeing people then I recommend making the time and effort to see people I'm so sorry that this happens every year because I know it happens to, like if it happens to me every year it's just like one of those things it's like how do we avoid it and I don't know that there is like a perfect answer on how to avoid it but I think don't cut yourself off if that's your instinct, because that's what I do and it's definitely not healthy. Even if you don't think you need contact, just you know, throw it out there, say hello to someone, be like, are you doing good? Doesn't even mean you have to meet up with them. It doesn't mean you have to commit to seeing them. Maybe just saying hello and like checking in is gonna be good enough for you. That's my recommendation. As far as fashion goes, I don't know. I don't really like follow fashion like I think some other people do. I think a big part of that is that I am fat and finding fashion that I find desirable at the shape and size that I am is like more difficult. And I do really wanna take sustainability into consideration when I'm making purchases, uh, but it is harder to find sustainable fashion that I'm interested in. I find that sustainable fashion built that sizes up to what I could wear is not to my taste. I really like bodycon stuff. And like, that's the kind of stuff that you find on like Fashion Nova in my size. I really don't want to be the person who's doing like Fashion Nova hauls, but I also don't want to be the person who like buys potato sacks and tries to really give like a good, you know, like tries to like be like, oh, I buy sustainable, but like I, I, I do my best and I try my hardest. So like, I, uh, anyway, 
So I'm into like quirky fashion. I don't know if you, so <laughs> the fashion brand that I'm always most interested in, and he doesn't make my size, but I wouldn't be able to afford it if he did size up to me, like if he did make my size in clothing, but it's the fashion brand Ashish and <laughs> probably not even close with Stainal brand. A lot of the stuff has sequins. My, like, He's just done so many things where it's just kind of ugly, but it's sparkly. And I like really like that. I think the moth dress is like really like the kind of fashion that if I could afford to have like quirky pieces like that to just wear every day stuff. And the, the thing about the moth dress is it's so comfortable and like it's something that I could see myself wearing more than just at like for a reason like for an event to dress up but like I'm much I'm very much like a palazzo pants crop top kind of person where you see a little bit of midriff and like something really like tight and form fitting on top or something I tuck in I don't wear bodysuits mostly because I don't want to have to deal with like snapping something between my legs. I find fashion much harder for me to talk about and navigate and like I just don't feel like I'm eloquent about it even like if I did try to make content about it. So like that's where I land. It's just like harder to do when you have a fat body but I I, I know that it's kind of like we need it. Like I would love to be a fat non-binary person on the internet who is like talking about fashion and how I do it and how like explaining how like the way that I as a non-binary person approach fashion versus other people who are non-binary because non-binary doesn't look like much like right it doesn't have to look like anything while I choose to be very androgynous with my presentation that doesn't mean that all non-binary people are I also just think that there are people who people some people just need inspiration to break out of their box and I think that people kind of like look to people like me or like other creators to like give them the push to do that so I would love to do that I just don't know how to do that it's something that I'm still like thinking about anyway I'm gonna be done talking about fashion content here let me throw on a lipstick and then I will touch back in I just put on Max Whirl, one of my favorites from last year. One of my surprise, surprise favorites from last year. Okay, I'm gonna answer one more question and then we'll talk about the mascara from Link and then I will basically be done. Hobbies outside of makeup. Um, I don't know that I really have any hobbies outside of makeup and that's okay. There are definitely other things I'm like interested in. Like I am interested in fashion, but I don't scour Instagram or like the internet about fashion. I collect records, which I think I've kind of talked about here before, but I do that very slowly and I like buy a record once every now and then. Like I have quite a few and I would like to build that collection further. I just love, I love physical media and vinyl is my favorite way to like listen to music. I'm not like an audiophile by any means, so I couldn't tell you, like, I know there are people who are like, oh yeah, listening to records is like so much better than like an MP3 file or whatever. I, I couldn't tell you the difference. I like things that have ritual to them. So put like waking up on a weekend morning and putting a record on and just slowly starting my day. There's something like about that that feels really lovely to me. And then I'll put on another record and on another record while I'm drinking my coffee. And just like, there's something about that habit, that ritual that I really enjoy. My vinyl collection kind of grew organically over time. And then I was like, oh, I guess this is something that I do. And so, yeah, I, I I buy old prints, like I buy them off people on, so it's like, I'm not always buying new. It's, you know, it's just like fun. It's like when I think of a record, I'm like, oh, I would love to have them on vinyl, but it's an, ex it's an expense, it's a very expensive hobby. So that's why I don't do it all the time, especially things that are out of print. If it's very popular or there wasn't that many printed, it's like a little bit harder to get your hands on. I think that's it. Let's talk about the mascara. So this is the Blink Amplified Tubing Mascara. And this is what the wand looks like. So I'm going to, it's not going to really show up. This is in the, this is in the brown shade. I'm going to insert some other footage of me applying it on a different day because I was concerned that I was going to use the gel eyeliner today. If I wasn't using the gel eyeliner, I would zoom you in to talk about it. But here's the deal. I don't love this brush. And the reason I don't love this brush is I feel like it just kind of pushes my hair. I don't feel like it's getting in between my hair. However, I like the way that my lashes look when I use this mascara. It's pretty natural. It's not like super in your face about anything. It adds some length. It adds a little bit of volume, but it's just not the kind of kapow mascara that I'm normally interested in. So I typically like, I liked the shock from YSL, which we just talked about. The lash class mascara from YSL. I enjoyed the rubber lash from Isamea. I have tried 
like the damn girl mascara from Too Faced. I did enjoy that. The Dark Star mascara from Pat McGrath. So those are like the kinds of things I'm looking for. Like I want mascara to go on and go, wow. And I think comparing this to a tubing mascara that I've tried recently, I tried the Tarte Tartlet tubing mascara, and that gave me much more drama than this. Now, I gotta be honest, there were quite a few formulas that Blink had in the tubing mascara, and I'm not really sure that I like really sat down to process what each one does, so there might have been a better one for me. But if I was just going out to run errands, this much more subtle mascara look is like perfect for that. So I do think it has a place in the space. I typically only really ever want to have one mascara open at a time. So I kind of just go with the more dramatic ones because that's what I like to wear more when I'm putting on makeup. So I do think in the grand scheme of things, this isn't something that I would have purchased myself with my taste. And I, you know, again, speaking up again, I did receive this in PR. It is also the kind of tubing mascara that when you're rinsing it off, and this did not happen with the Tarte, but it does happen with this. Whenever you are, you know, rubbing them off, it does come off in tubes. I think I've tried other tubing mascaras that didn't come off in tubes, but this, I, I kind of think of Blink as the original tubing mascara brand. That might not be true. It's just because when I worked at Sephora, I think this was the only tubing formula we had in the store that I worked at. So I think that's why I'm like, they are the originators. Like, this is what they do. This is uh, what they function on. I think if you like a tubing mascara already and you were interested in trying a tubing mascara, that this would be like a, a good one. Like if you're if you're not looking for kapow, you're just looking for something that's gonna coat your lashes, it lasts all day, it really works well, it's easy to take off, there's never like remnants running all over your face because it comes off in those tubes. It really does the job. It like kind of lives up to all the promises. I've worn it like all day and it didn't move around, it didn't budge, no flaking, no fallout. It's a very good performing mascara. I don't know if I would have bought it in black if I would have liked it any better. Let me show you this brush. I just feel like it's it's so big. It's such a, a big brush with kind of like nowhere to go. And I've used like hourglass shaped brushes and curved brushes. There's just something about this shape that I find that I often will end up getting it on my eyelid because I it's so big in the way that it doesn't really catch my hairs. So yeah, I don't love the brush on this, but I think the formula is lovely. And so if you could get over the brush and like, what, yeah, I think that it's a worthwhile thing to try should you be interested in it. So I will keep this for, I got this in December. I've been testing all of the Blink products for about a month. It, it's, a, it's a very nice mascara. So to kind of review on the Blink items, I really liked this eyeshadow primer. I did think it, performed very, very well. I am keeping it. The only thing that I picked it over the Too Faced is because I found this to be a little more grippy and I do think it just like holds slightly bit better. So that's why I'm holding on to that. If you are looking for a new eyeshadow primer, I would recommend it. The gel eyeliner, great for wings, but maybe not the blackest and not really good for the waterline. So if you wanted your potted gel liner to do all of the things, it can't do all of the things. It has its limitations. And then the mascara, really great formula, don't love the brush, but it is, it does everything that you want a tubing mascara to do. Again, Blink was kind enough to provide me with my own referral code. If you are interested in anything in Blink, click through there and you would get 20% off using my link. Again, no pressure to purchase anything from them, but I do encourage you to just check out the website to see if there's anything on there that catches your eye or just to see what Blink has to offer. Cause again, I was just like, man, they have a lot more stuff than I thought that they did. And that was just kind of fun to know because it might be something that you might think of later and go, oh, maybe I do want to try that. That wraps it up for me. This is what my skin, oh, look at that. Look at that cheek, man. Man, I'm really glad I went back. I'm, I'm glad I spent the remainder of my budget on this. I think we are going to have a lovely relationship, me and this cheek product. But yeah, I'm feeling gorgeous. I'm feeling stunning. Thank you all so much for watching. If you were new here and you watched and hung out, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video so you can get into the eyes of other people. And I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. Again, no pressure to. Remember to follow your hoat and you will find me. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.